My name's Nathan. I'm Izzy. And this is our self-built Frankenstein van. This is a 2011 Iveco Daily cab and what we've done is we've put a 1986 Winnebago back end onto the rear of the chassis there. So this originally started as a Tesco delivery van that they sold off the fleet from and I brought it without the box. So all I had to do was cut off our front end and put the Winnebago on. What we've got here is the kind of union of these two. You've got the Iveco, You've got the original Renault traffic chassis the Winnebago was on, and you've got the original Winnebago back end. Now, when we were first looking for a vehicle, we wanted something that was stealth, something like a Mercedes Sprinter. That was our preference. But we found on Gumtree, um, this Winnebago original stored in a barn that someone wanted to renovate themselves, but unfortunately couldn't due to medical reasons. As soon as I saw the LPG tanks for the cooking and heating on board and all the toilet systems in place, we knew we'd save a lot of time and money just by buying this and moving forward with that. So that's what we did. We took it, put it on a low bed trailer, got it shipped to where we were, which wasn't too far away, about 30 miles, and then started work on it by ripping out the inside and installing the solar systems on the roof so we had electric as we always want to live off grid in that capacity as best as possible. So on the front here, we've mounted the lights um, on the big spotlight on the front and spotlights on the side. And this is so when we come into, go into a car park or an off-road area, we can illuminate the whole area and see exactly where it's best to park up for the night. It's super helpful, super, super helpful. And obviously we store our spare tires for our trailer and a spare tire for a motorbike up there as well. So what we did is we cut off the front of the original Winnebago, just the cab section. So that was the steering wheel area and the two seats. We literally cut with our saw through the whole area and dragged it out the way with a car. We had lifted up the back end so we could take off all of the exhaust and all of where the rear wheel went um, by putting some metal uh, section underneath and lifting it up with one single farm jack and that took about three days to do overall and we slowly lifted up each corner we used six beer barrels to hold it on and some timber to get it high enough so we could eventually reverse the Iveco chassis under now there was a couple of people watching out because the air the ground was so undulated and pothole full of potholes that suddenly the chassis would kick up about a foot and obviously we didn't want to knock off this rear body section which looked and felt quite unstable really uh, health and safety wouldn't have appreciated this at all but we managed to drop it onto this new chassis weld up the whole area up here which is why we're left with quite a ugly section at the top that we're trying to hide with the uh, tires and everything going up there but overall it's worked a lot better because now we've got a 2.2 litre diesel engine it's a triptonic gearbox so it just drives lovely it's limited to about 60 miles an hour because of the old Tesco delivery requirements but that's perfect for us we really don't want or need to go any faster but it's got enough torque now just to take us up and down hills without any issue it's absolutely lovely to drive so this is the LPG system that convinced us to originally buy this Winnebago. We uh, just go up to the fuel station, fill it up, and that'll last us about four months cooking on gas on our two hob burner. We've also got the water fill point, which we'll do at a fuel station with a radiator fill up, and that'll take about 15 minutes to fill up that tank inside. This is our washing machine. It's a traditional twin tub style washing machine. Now we find it really helpful to be kind of self-sufficient and able to do as much as possible within reason from the van here. So this does take quite a bit of water to fill up but you can wash it all, it drains out the bottom 
and you can spin it and hang up on your line and then half a day you can do a full week's washing. So in our trailer here that we tow, uh, we've got our two custom trails motorbikes. We originally wanted to put a motorbike on the back of the van, but because both of us like riding and we needed two motorbikes, there was just too much weight, so the trailer it was. So this is the kitchen inside our van. Um, so we've got pretty much everything that a normal home would have. So we've got a two burner gas stove here, so that runs off the LPG. We've got our dish drying rack, which was a great find from Ikea. Bread bin, so we've screwed that down so it doesn't slide all over the place when we're moving around. Little oven, that was a great find in Lidl's. I think it was about 30 pounds and it's, yeah, still going strong, does the job. Sink, so that's plumbed into both the water tank and the black water tank. So that just goes straight down and then we can empty that out whenever we need to. So one thing that we did find we needed was extra storage space to keep things like the kettle. I love tea, so, you know, all the different tea bags and everything. So corner shelves is something that we added in at a later date after putting the rest of this in and it made such a difference. You know, it meant that the kettle didn't have to sit on top of the hob the whole time. It's not gonna move around when we're driving along. Um, so everything we keep in place with these mini bungees and they're not, you know, it's not the fanciest fix in the world, but it holds everything in place. Nothing's ever flown out when we've been driving along. When I did live in a house, I was quite a gardener. So got to have some plants. So we've got a bit of lemon sage, we've got rosemary, we've got some St. John's wort there as well. Uh, just, you know, brings a bit more of the outdoors indoors, even though we're outdoors <laughs> the whole time. Um, so I guess the other shelves is these ones here. So we've got our, I say my glittery gold shelves, but that's, you know, where we keep the rest of the spices and the lentils and everything. Um, that's another later addition that we made, which again, I don't think, you know, we could keep the amount of food that we do now without things like these shelves. Um, so everything kitchen based is pretty much in this section. So we've got these drawers here for, you know, tins of food and packets of bits and pieces. We've got rice and quinoa and stuff like that in there. Um, we've got these smaller drawers, which they kind of keep you know, thread and pens and, you know, I keep my jewellery and things in there. Um, so down in that cupboard there, we've got our water tank, which is what comes out of the tap there and into the toilet when it flushes as well. Um, it's quite a big one, but it's good that we can see it when we're filling it up so we can actually see how much we need to, to fill it up because it's not always necessary to do it the whole way if we've got a long journey. So this is our fridge, a very important part of the van. As you can see, it's quite a lot bigger than a lot of the fridges you'd get for vans now. Um, it's actually the original one from when it was a Winnebago, um, full working order, so why get rid of it? Um, as you can see, it's more than ample space in there to keep everything we'd need to. Uh, we're vegetarian, so we don't need to keep meat. So that's, you know, meat going off isn't an issue for us. It's mostly just cheese and milk, pretty much. Um, so all these stickers, Kind of represent things we're interested in so motorbikes the outdoors you know got a few of our friends businesses represented on here so this is our bathroom at the moment pretty much just use it for the toilet the shower we haven't quite decided whether we're going to have one inside or outside but currently it's good for hanging our bathrobes on um store our toiletries we've got our bin in here and then it kind of becomes wet gear dumping ground pretty much um we do have two extraction plan fans plumbed in up there for if we do have a hot shower working, then it's not gonna all moisten up. Um, we also put some frosty film on the inside of there for obvious reasons. So under the bed is where we keep our four large batteries for storing electric. We create the power from the three solar panels that are stuck to our roof. It comes through the fuse box and from that fuse box, we're feeding the electric to the pumps for the water in our sink and to the USB ports for charging things like phones, tablets, any other portable device. Most things are USB these days and it's really helpful. So if we need more power, we pull out our generator, which is a two kilowatt generator, or we do have our 600 watt inverter for our traditional three plug 240 volt system. So this is the living slash storage half of the van. So everything on this side here is all storage. 
This side is all our clothes, most of our shoes as well. Um, down in there, we've got our laundry bin, we've got my silver smithing and jewellery tools as well, backpacks and everything that generally doesn't really have a home. Um, so over this side, everything underneath here as well is all storage, um, so everything's got a use. Uh, under this side we've got the generator, a few other bits of tools, uh, other random bits and pieces. Underneath the back is all the bedding and spare blankets. And then over to the side is all the ledger batteries um, and then the diesel heater and the inverter as well. Other bits and pieces, we've got this lovely ash shelf, again from uh, a local guy just up the road who put this in for us. Um, fruit bowl which is again uh, quite secured down so it's not going to go flying off when we're moving around. Selection of books and pieces, got to keep our motorbike helmets up there so they're kept in by the bungee cords so that wraps the whole way around when we're travelling. Um, and then we've got our Wi-Fi down in the corner there as well, little Wi-Fi box. So our bed's really comfortable so as you can see it's in the seating arrangement now. Um, so to make it into the bed we just pull the middle section forward to the front and then the cushion at the back there just folds down flat. Um, so we lie lengthways on this. Neither of us are particularly tall, so that's absolutely perfect for us both. Width-wise, we both have enough space. Never end up fighting about who's got more space or anything. Um, but yeah, really warm, really snuggly, absolutely perfect. Head over to theindieproducts.com forward slash shop and check out our new merchandise. Join us on Patreon for exclusive content and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss a video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.